Anterior-Posterior Patterning of Drosophila, a video project by Amelie, Melissa, and Melanie. The ideal system used to study anterior-posterior patterning is Drosophila melanogaster, also known as the fruit fly. Beginning with work done by Thomas Hunt Morgan, Drosophila are used for various fields of study because of their small size, rapid growth rate, and their ability to be easily manipulated. With their development lasting nine days, a haploid female egg is fertilized by a haploid sperm, forming a diploid-zygotic nucleus. Afterwards, various cell divisions occur, resulting in the formation of the syncytial blastoderm. Studies done by Sander, Yajima, and Koltoff provided evidence of a patterning mechanism in Drosophila embryos. It was concluded through studies that the anterior portion of the embryos only gave rise to anterior structures, while the posterior portion only to posterior structures and not vice versa. With this finding, Sanders concluded the presence of morphogens. Morphogens are substances that specify the tissue fates of the posterior and anterior portions. These morphogens then diffuse through the syncytial blastoderm, forming two gradients. The syncytial blastoderm is an ideal environment for these gradients, containing both protein and RNA, which then are able to diffuse from a point source. Various experiments were conducted, which further explained that there are determinants that specify either the anterior or posterior fates, while inhibiting the other. These experiments included manipulations involving UV irradiation, cytoplasm leakage, and transferring of posterior and anterior determinants. Although the existence of determinants was established through these experiments, what actually separated these determinants into separate categories are genes, specifically zygotic and maternal genes. The phenotype of zygotic genes is indicated by the genotype of the embryo while in maternal genes, the phenotype of the embryo is dictated by the genotype of the mother. We have divided the segments and what protein is responsible for each segment. As you can see, depicted, bicoid is in charge of acron head and thorax fates, while caudal and nanos are responsible for the abdomen and the telson. As previously stated, the anterior-posterior axis of Drosophila is laid down through the establishment of various protein morphogens. Maternal mRNA is deposited in the egg before fertilization and is localized to a specific region. On the left, bicord mRNA is localized in the anterior and diffuses posteriorly. This results in a protein gradient that activates hunchback in the anterior and represses caudal in the posterior. Nanos mRNA is located in the posterior and diffuses anteriorly. Nanos represses hunchback in the posterior by removing the three cap of the mRNA, which results in its degradation. Maternal hunchback mRNA is deposited evenly throughout the egg, but the combined effects of nanos and bicoid establish a hunchback protein gradient. This gradient defines the anterior to posterior axis and activates a cascade that includes both gap and parallel genes to further specify Drosophila regions. In the first graph, you can see a gradient difference between bicoid and nanos on a posterior anterior axis. In the second graph, hunchback is found in a higher amount near the anterior because bicoid activates it. The amount of bicoid must reach the threshold amount for it to activate hunchback. There is less hunchback towards the posterior end because nanos represses it. Here we have depicted caudal protein. Caudal protein will also define the posterior region of the embryo even further. This gradient is set up through the repression of bicoid in the anterior. The anterior and posterior regions are also defined by the presence of an acron or a telson. A torso receptor is present throughout the plasma membrane, but the trunk ligand is deposited only at the poles. 
This receptor ligand binding, along with the expression of several gap genes, specify whether an acron or a telson is formed. With all this being explained, this concludes the anterior-posterior axis setup in Drosophila through morphogen gradients. Adding on to the conclusion, as a good study tool, it would be good to answer the following question. How do the gradients of bicoid and nanos influence the anterior-posterior patterning in Drosophila? Include the protein that is affected and describe the expression patterns of each protein.